you're not being graded. My name's Erin Simon. I'm a massage therapist. I've been in practice for 24 years. Uh, I do a variety of techniques, but mostly what I specialize in is lymphatic drainage. And I've come up with a program that not only reduces edema, but reduces inches, weight, and just helps with your all-over health. So, huh? Yes. It's the same process. Whether it's weight loss, detox, or reducing edema and inflammation, it's all the same thing. So if anyone has questions or you can't hear me, please let me know. Okay. So let me get started. So let me do a quick explanation of your lymphatic system. And let's see if... Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, okay, we can't get that close. But you have lymph vessels wherever you have veins. So between your dermis and epidermis, your muscles, your organs, and the periosteum of your bones. You have superficial and deep drainage. Everything in a healthy, unimpaired lymphatic system is supposed to flow in specific directions. So in general, all lymph joins your venous system at your heart, goes to your kidneys, you pee out the excess. Before that, though, lymph all goes to nodes where it's concentrated. You have about 700 nodes in your body. Everyone thinks head, neck, groin, and armpits, but the real treasure trove is your belly. Everything you don't want in your body has to get to your belly. This is the magic place where all the everything happens. So, why be concerned? about your lymphatic system. This is, it is your, I, I found the most disgusting picture I could find. This is your, your most important detoxification system. Everything that goes through your body, medications, hormones, corn chips, everything goes through your lymphatic system. So you don't want to clog your pipes. You want to keep everything moving because this is your garbage disposal. All right, and the magical thing, I'm going to keep coming back to this, is that your lymphatic system doesn't care whether your intention is weight loss, detox, or reducing edema and inflammation. It's all garbage. It all goes through the same process. So the thing that is really important about your lymphatic system, okay, you don't want to let edema accumulate. You don't want to let that fluid accumulate because it's all cellular debris, okay? And it is a breeding ground for infection. If you have a skin wound, it is most likely to become infected. But I will say absolutely edema, lymphedema can improve and can be managed. You won't ever completely get rid of it, but it can be reduced to a reasonable level that will not be impacting your life in such a negative way. So difference between edema and lymphedema. Okay, edema is basically swelling. You know, like you got a bee sting, you got a sprain, no big deal, it's a temporary thing. But if you have damage to your lymphatic system, nodes removed, nodes irradiated, that's a game changer. Okay, because then a bee sting, um, a bad fall, that can start the process. Okay, because there's people that say, oh, I had my cancer years ago, they took all these lymph nodes, and I didn't, you know, I never got lymphedema, but just, you know, a number of circumstances all in a row can tip the balance. Because I have people tell me, I was fine for 30 years. I was fine for 10 years, and then one day, boom. Okay, so there's, there's a number of conditions that will aggravate it, and also conditions that will release it, or relieve, relieve it, rather. So, you know, and I, I'm sorry, I've reached this point where I can't see with or without my glasses. So, <laughs> I guess you're all there, too. Okay, so lifestyle choices. This is a huge factor, huge factor. And what I'm seeing more and more now is people 
who haven't had cancer or who have not had lymph nodes damaged developing chronic edema due to lifestyle choices. Okay, so that's a big factor in your all over health. Um, you know, a lot of my information, if you got the, the maintaining the benefits sheet over there, there's a lot of this information on there. So you don't have to write down every word I say because it's not gospel. <laughs> okay. So what can you do to make your lymphatic system work for you? Water. Remember, this is your garbage disposal. The garbage disposal works better when you run water through it. This is huge. Our bodies, we start off as babies being mostly water. And as we age, we, con we continue to dehydrate. Um, and the amount, well, so let me go over what water does for you. Water composes 75% of your brain. So you absolutely want to keep everything hydrated. You need water for, to carry nutrients and oxygen in your cells. Um, helps you breathe better, helps convert food to energy, cushions your joints, helps remove waste from your body. Um, you absolutely cannot go without water. And I'm sure you've all heard of people having serious health issues from without meaning to dehydrate themselves. I, themselves. I had an elderly client years ago who came in for his regular massage and nothing felt right on him. His muscles felt like, he felt like beef jerky. And then his skin stayed in whatever position I put it in and, and he was peeling. And I said, what's going on? And he said, well, you know, my knees and my back hurt and like, this is not related to your knees and your back. What is going on? And I kept at him until I got the truth. Turns out he was older. He was having prostate issues. And he decided it was such a pain because of his knees and back to keep going to the bathroom. He cut all liquid out of his diet. And the first thing that came to my mind was, my God, you're not going to be concerned <laughs> about your knees and back when your kidneys shut down because that was the next thing that could happen if you didn't have a stroke or heart attack from being so severely dehydrated. So absolutely, what you need to take in every day, you can't see this, I, I know you can't see this, I can barely see it, is half your body weight in fluid ounces every day. So if you weigh about 150 pounds, you want 75 pounds ounces of fluid. Juicy fruits and vegetables count. Pop and coffee do not. And just plain water is best. Um, if you're not used to drinking water, you increase gradually. Because if you suddenly say, oh my god, I'm not drinking any water, and you drink everything you think you should have in a day, you're going to just pee and pee and pee. Okay? You have to allow your body to Learn how, relearn how to utilize all that water. Uh, I just saw someone at the pool the other day, and she is in the pool all day, every day, and she looks like a big piece of bacon. I mean, she is so, she's big, but she's really desiccated looking. And she, we were talking about health issues, and she goes, yes. Um, says there's weight, water, and your um, water bottle 16 ounces. Okay, I think that's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I could also. Yeah, but basically, I mean, if you weigh 200 pounds, you want 100 ounces of fluid. Just you know, just cut it in half and put it in half. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an average. But keep in mind, more with extreme heat and cold and exercise. If you are out there sweating to death, more water. Don't wait till your mouth is dry. Then you already know you need water. Um, but anyhow, you know, this woman tells me, oh, you know, my doctor told me, you know, my kidneys are, I'm starting to go into kidney failure. And I said, how much water do you drink? Oh, I never drink water. 
<laughs> when are you going to start? When? So, yeah, we have, we have so much control over what we put on our bodies. So, and again, let me see what I have next with here. Okay. Someone always tells me I'm all full of water weight. Why would I drink more water? Water weight and bloat is not the same as being hydrated. They are completely different things, and we are going to go into what, what factors go into water weight. Okay, because, yeah, that's not fun. Um, there it is. Okay, signs of dehydration. Just want to go over this. Dry, sticky mouth, lethargy, sunken eyes, weight loss, inability to urinate, or very dark urine. That's a, that's a good one. Um, poor skin tension. Okay, if things stay up, you know you're dehydrated. Uh, low blood pressure, uh, confusion. So if you're not feeling right and you know you're not drinking water and you know it's either crazy hot or crazy cold out there, that's the first thing you go for. And I like, oops, wait. I like this so much. <laughs> Don't wait for the first lady. Run and get your own water. <laughs> okay, that was just such a wonderful photo. So again, the garbage disposal works better when you run water through it. It's not just your lymphatic system, it's colon health, it's your whole digestive system. Everything in your body will work better when it's hydrated. Okay. Now, okay, next thing. Healthy foods and healthy portions. This is this is where I'd say most people screw up with, with managing weight and, and lymphedema especially. I have a lady who's so skinny she makes me look completely out of shape. And she's had joint replacements and her, her knee of course is like a stick but she keeps coming in and telling me it's swollen, I, it hurts, it's swollen and I'd ask her well, did you bang it? Did you twist it? What did you do in class? And everything's fine. I finally asked her, what did you eat last night? And she said, oh, I was at a wine and cheese party. So I said, oh, how many ounces of non-soluble fat did you stuff in vessels the size of spider webs with wine, which is a dehydrator? She figured out every time she'd come in with a swollen knee, that's what had happened the night before. Okay, she does South Beach diet, which mostly works for her, but she doesn't eat carbs. She eats fats and she loves her wine. So now, it, it ha it's been a few years. She has not come in asking, you know, complaining about a swollen knee. So she's balancing out the cheese and wine with water and other food choices. Okay. I love this. Okay, please, if you're starving, <laughs> okay, that's the last thing you want to go for. Okay, the other thing is with food cravings, I think I will get to that later on, food cravings are a huge part of telling you what you're lacking in your diet. And what I have found is most people who are going for sweets are, again, dehydrated and they're going for sweets rather than water. That's, I'd say consistently, absolutely consistently. People that have the, oh, I have a sweet tooth. How much water do you drink? I never drink water. There's, I see it consistently and I've looked it up and it keeps coming back to the same thing, water. So what I really like when you're starving is a, a filling snack. Okay, there's some fiber, you've got a high fiber cracker, you've got fruit which is more water and fiber and then there's even peanut butter on there. Little bit, a little bit of fat and a little bit of fiber to calm you down so you're not eating in a frenzy and eating stuff that you really don't, you know, that you're going to regret later. Huge factor and 
you know, it's just keeping, getting in the habit of keeping healthy, guilt-free snacks around. So it's there, it's available, um, you know, always having fruit out, always having cut up vegetables out, just so they're there and it's the first thing you can grab. Um, what I like calling it actually is, I call it panic food. So like one of my favorite panic foods, I have, oh, okay, maybe we're skipping it to something else. You know what gazpacho is? It's like a cold tomato soup. It's like, it's like the healthy version of V8. V8 is almost healthy. I mean, they have the right idea with vegetables, but there's like 800 milligrams of salt in each serving. So, oh, you get more dehydrated and suck up more water. So, you know, if I use V8, I use it for the liquid in my gazpacho. But again, a ton of liquid and a ton of fiber, healthy fiber. So I fill up and I'm calm and I can then think about what it is I want to eat that makes sense. So I'm not going for the chips. And of course, I've got teenagers. So yes, I have all the chips and garbage and everything else in the house. And I just you know, <laughs> make myself, it's a choice, make myself go for the fruit and veggies first. Okay, so the water weight and bloat. Anytime you eat carbs, any kind of carbohydrate, good or bad, each gram of carb binds with three grams of carbohydrate, or three grams of water. Each gram of carb binds with three grams of carbohydrate. And you store a certain amount in your muscles and liver and your blood. And that's glycogen. It's a complex carbohydrate energy source. If you're eating all the healthy high fiber carbs, veggies and whole grains, um, nuts, seeds, beans, you're going to poop out all of that bulk. Okay, you've got healthy fiber, you've got all the health benefits of healthy fiber and you poop out the bulk. If you're going for the white flour, white sugar, white potatoes, white rice, all those things that have no nutrients and no fiber, you're basically making wheat paste and sticking paper mache on. So that's, that's why, like after the big spaghetti dinner, you're like, oh my god, I gained weight overnight. How the hell did I do that? That's what it is, okay? That's the difference between the healthy carbs and the not so great carbs. It's unfortunate in our society, these are the cheaper and more readily available ones, and you really have to make a, a choice. Let me see what I have next. Okay, of course, no one can read this. <laughs> in fact, I can't even see it. So, health benefits of dietary fiber. Um, found only in plant-based foods. Okay, that's an important thing. Um, helps eliminate toxins. Um, helps with your garbage disposal, um, lower risk of heart disease, I mean there's uh, slower utilization of sugar and fat, so you're not going to do the, the sugar rush and crash. Um, creates a sense of fullness, okay, that's the thing, like so many people who want to lose weight, you feel like you're starving half, to, half the time. If you are bulking up with vegetables, you will feel full and calmer and you won't feel like you are starving to death, which is, yeah, which is the big problem. People just say, I, I can't diet, I'm always thinking about food, I'm always starving. If you are going for things like, like my thing is the, the gazpacho, any kind of fresh veggies, fresh food, fill up on healthy, juicy fiber first. I feel full and I feel calm and then I can take my time and think about what I'm going to fill up on next, if it's a protein or whatever. Let me see what I have next. Okay, so water weight. So when people, let me skip around a little bit. When people go on the low carb diets, Generally, what they're losing first is all the water weight. So if these are people who are eating like lots of 
bread, spaghetti, white rice, white potatoes, and they say, oh my God, I did Atkins or I did low carb and I lost all this weight. That was water weight, okay? But then, to lose fat, you have to create a deficit of 3,500 calories. So losing water weight is one thing. Losing the extra stuff is another process on top of it. Um, I know a woman, she always had a piece of candy in her mouth. And one of her friends even came to me and ratted her out and said, I have never seen her without a piece of candy. She finally dropped the candy habit. She lost 30 pounds which was probably a combination of water weight because she dropped all those, the sugar carbs, and then fat weight because it was a reduction of her all over calories. I mean, if she's at work for eight hours, six or eight hours, and she had a piece of candy in her mouth continually for a 40 hour work week, that's a, <laughs> that's a lot of extra. So, um, one more example. A woman I know told me several really important things about herself. She said every adult woman in her family is obese. Okay. She also said she has the healthiest diet of anybody she knows. And I agree to some extent with that because it shows in her hair and skin and eyes. She just really glows with health. However, she says, she says but she's never hungry but she eats because she knows she should. And I said, if you're not hungry, isn't that telling you something important that you don't need food? And I think this is a huge problem with our society that we've gotten into the habit of eating for entertainment. I'm bored, I have nothing to do, I don't want to clean the kitchen, so I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna see what the kids left, okay. I have gotten in the habit because my, my other half will sit on the porch and read and crunch, 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 crunch. And I mean, he's, I mean, he won't just put the damn chip in his mouth. He sits there and I, nah, 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 nah. so I mean, it's like there's crumbs. I mean, there's everything and he's making so much noise. I have to go do laundry. I'll weed the yard because I can't sit next to him because it's, it's, it's too hard. It's really hard. So yeah, I mean, and you know, crossing menopause, crossing that threshold, everything I knew previously about my body kind of went out the window. Um, about two and a half years ago, I put on 10 pounds in a month. I can't lose it. It was that fast, <laughs> that fast. And so with putting this information together, I answered questions for myself. And one of them was, why do I gain weight overnight? And that was, that was the carbs. It was absolutely what I was eating at night because I would wake up and get on the scale and what the hell happened? I'm a pound and a half heavier. How, how did I do that? I was sleeping. So it was the quality and quantity of the carbs I was eating before bed. That was a huge one, okay? So switching to like a high fiber cereal, having veggies, having fruit before bed, I'm still having my snack, but it's not doing the damage that the chips were. <coughs> Big one. Okay, let me see what is... Okay, so... I think... I nibble. I do a lot of nibbling. I just keep a lot of stuff around. There's always fruit, always veggies, again, so just want to put that in your head. Just, you know, if you have a baggie and just throw little bits of things in. And one of the things that's really important with this, okay, there's a lot of veggies here, so you're getting a lot of bulk, a lot of healthy fiber, but there's also, and you can't see because it's so damn small, but there's always a healthy fat which will help you feel full also. You need just a little bit of fat so that you don't feel like you are starving to death. Okay, fun stuff. Exercise, benefits of exercise. This list, there's a similar list later, which is the benefits of massage. They are almost identical. Reduces blood pressure, promotes psychological well-being, uh, builds strong bones, muscles, and joints, reduces risk of heart attack, 
um, reduces risk of fractures, uh, reduces feelings of anxiety and depression, re releases endorphins, um, prevents weight gain, reduces risk of diabetes. So exercise, okay, need water, need healthy diet, need exercise. This is a huge one. And you have to find a way of exercising every day. If you're stuck inside, if it's raining, even just going up and down your steps a few times. I used to make my kids, when they were obnoxious, run laps from the cellar to the third floor. And I realized that actually works. <laughs> it works, <laughs> OK? If you have a lot of stairs in your house, it works and it counts. Uh, a variety. You've got to keep yourself interested. But the other thing is you need cardio, you need flexibility, and you need strength. You want equal ratios of strength and flexibility. Okay? I know so many people, you know, no one ever comes to me for massage because they're too flexible. Everyone comes to me because they are too tight and uncomfortable and can't move. So along with moving it, you got to stay, where is, i got to see where this next one is. Oh, it's further down. The flexibility one is different, is further down. Okay. I had to show you this woman. She is 77. The, she started lifting when she was in her 40s. Okay. So, okay. So 30 some years of lifting. Now that's professional weight lifting. This is lifting three times a week. Okay, this is just regular stuff. That's professional because I have people will say, oh my God, I don't want to bulk up. It takes so much work to look that spectacular. <laughs> okay, but that is an option. That is a lifestyle. That is an absolute <laughs> lifestyle. Now the thing with losing fat, I always have people ask me, doesn't muscle weigh more than fat? Well, no. Okay, I'm going to show you something. A pound is a pound, whether it's fat, muscle, feathers, potato chips, but it's the size and composition of it. That woman probably weighs a hell of a lot more than you think, but it's all lean, healthy muscle mass. And so with lifting weights, even if you have padding on top, your muscles are going to be in a better shape and take up less space, and that gives you more clothing options, which is the most exciting thing of all, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you can put on something that actually has a waist, yeah, life is already good. Okay, um, let me see where I am, okay. So for people who have access to a pool, this is one of the best ways of absolutely busting your butt and not getting sore, okay? That's for people who are not used to exercise or people who are carrying a lot of weight, you will not hurt yourself in water. And the best thing of all, you can do cardio and strength work in a pool. Now. One of the questions I answered for myself was, I exercise all the time, but I don't lose any weight, okay? So part of that was my chip habit at night, and I, oh, back to food cravings. I figured out what that was related to. I needed healthy fats from nuts and seeds. I eat a lot of fish, but I was not eating any kind of nuts and seeds. When I, went, when I started eating plant-based fats, my chip craving really settled down. So um, guacamole, nuts, seeds, I put pumpkin seeds on my salads. That keeps me from the chip thing. So if you have some insatiable food craving, look it up and see what real nutrient you are lacking. Okay, now the thing, okay, exercise all the time, I'm not losing any weight. And I thought back years ago, I used to dance professionally and I could eat anything in any quantity and I was 30 pounds lighter than I am now and then you know life changed. I figured out what I was missing anaerobic interval training. 
Okay. Remember the movie Flashdance? Okay, and she's doing that thing. What that does is you're burning out the glycogen, that, that energy source in your muscles and liver. You go as hard and as fast as you can for as long as you can. And if you last a minute and a half, that is a long time. It feels like everything catches fire. And then you've got to go back to your regular pace again. So when I'm in the pool, I do, and I have, you know, I look like a nut. Okay, I've got a visor on, I've got glasses, I've got a high neck shirt because I've, I've had skin cancer, so I, I look like a crazy person in the pool. Oh, and I have, these are amazing, they're wet, uh, swim gloves. These are webbed neoprene gloves because anything you do in water with your upper body is going to utilize your core. Everything you don't want in your body has to get to your core. So when I'm in the water, I do a few laps. Then I get in the deep so no one can see how crazy I look. And I do my, my flash dance thing. I'll alternate. I'll do the legs. I'll do the arms. I'll punch in different directions. Everything catches fire. Burn out that glycogen. Burn way more calories, five to seven times more calories than just doing my walking laps. Okay, it boosts your metabolism um, and you will continue to burn calories for hours afterwards. Now the great thing in water is, again, I'm covered so no one can see that <laughs> I look like I'm insane, but you don't, I don't get sore. I will get tired, but I don't get sore. The other thing, the water moving against all of that superficial limp is what you want. This is why after you move vigorously in a pool, you have to go pee. You are stimulating that whole system. So, yeah, while the pools are open, absolutely make use of it. There's also, you know, like the Oliver Street bathhouse, there are inexpensive city pools. And this is like the greatest thing, the adding anaerobic intervals in. And even like if you belong to a gym and they have intervals on the machine, it's just a lot harder doing it out of water when you know you're with gravity. It's just a lot harder to do it, but it still works. And you can do the same thing walking. Walk at your regular pace. Walk as fast as you can for as long as you can. You won't last, you know, if you last a minute and a half, that's a long time. But then the other thing is what's really important about the interval training is it's training your body to replenish that glycogen quickly. And where you need that in real life is if you suddenly have to dart across the street or grab a child out of the street. You have explosive speed if you need it. So that's a real life application. But getting back into your clothes and moving, you know, the, the harder and faster you move in the water, the better. Okay, you want to get all of that going. Okay. Now, I brought homemade hoops. I'm always looking at exercise equipment. And I saw in Walmart they had weighted exercise hoops. But I thought, I'm not paying $30 to see, you know, what that's all about. So I started looking up hooping. And turns out there's two kinds of hoops. There's, there's lightweight dance hoops. And these are not exactly lightweight. They're close. But then there's also weighted exercise hoops. Now, I, didn't, I thought about putting this woman's video on here. I found this woman. She's got a great name, Rachel Lust. Okay, She started hooping in her kitchen after having a baby. And now she's like a world champion. This woman rocks, absolutely rocks out. But anyhow, more practical application. What hooping does, and we can all try this afterwards, I figured out a few things. The bigger you are around the middle and the stiffer you are, the bigger the hoop you need. OK, because I started off with, I made one for my 13-year-old. And I figured, OK, it has to come up to about your belly button. So I made a 9-foot one for him and a 10-foot one for me. And all I was doing was spin, drop, pick up, spin, drop, pick up. And my 16-year-old comes out, looks at me, and I said, this is really hard. And he, 
picks it up, does it with no problem, calls me a nerd, and walks away. I thought, all right, what's the difference? Okay, he's really skinny. He's got that 24-inch waist, and he's tall. He's also way more flexible. So I went back to some more reading. I figured, all right, let's try an 11-foot hoop. And like, oh, I could almost do that. Then I went to a 12-footer. Oh, suddenly I could do it. So I figured out the bigger the hoop, the slower it is. And because I was so stiff at the time, all I could do is rock back and forth, and eventually I could move to a slower hoop and move. What this does, it's all core work. It's all core work. You want to take off inches from like your bust down to your knees? This is the fastest, easiest way, and you can stand in front of your TV and do it. It is like the greatest thing. And the weighted one, you know, we can all play with the toys afterwards. The weighted one feels like it massages your organs and your muscles. The other thing is, I don't know anyone who doesn't need more mobility in their spine. I had a, like a life-changing fall like 20 some years ago and I never quite got my mobility back in my neck. I feel significantly better. Really significantly better. Yeah. I made these. Real easy. Went to Lowe's, got a 100-foot roll of tubing. You don't have to buy a 100-foot roll. Um, got the irrigation tubing, and then they have these little connector thingies. Um, anyhow, I just I measured the hoop, cut it with my garden, my hedge trimmers, um, and then the, the little connector thingy has like a little knob, like a little nub on it, so I stuck my, I cut that off because I didn't want it poking out. I stick the end of the black tubing in boiling water, jam the connector in, do the same with the other end, and put a piece of duct tape, <laughs> which fixes everything on it. So, it, it was practice. Okay. Yeah, I, mine. Yeah, I found a great site. Uh, mine was 19.99 on a site called Deal Genius. But you might do better with a bigger one until because I started off with the 12 footer, and then I was able to go to an 11 footer, and then 10, and then that one. So I actually, I mean, I have, I made a few 13s even. <laughs> What's that? No, I didn't put any beads because it's like if I'm standing in front of the TV, I don't want to, yeah. And in general, how much does that cost? Well, the, the, oh, well, the 100 foot roll was like 20 bucks. So, yeah, and then the connectors were, so it was under 25 to make like a dozen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is a quick and easy thing, but this is like the fastest, easiest thing to do core work and gain mobility in your spine. Okay, so we'll play later. <laughs> Any questions? People have questions. We good so far? Okay, so stretch every day. Lymph flows better through stretched, relaxed muscles. Okay, most people are as strong as they need, but you need to have an equal ratio of flexibility so you move well. Little changes accrue with everything you do. Adding a little more water, making little tweaks to your diet, making little tweaks to how you exercise. Little changes accrue. You can't do everything all at once because it becomes like a restrictive religion and it's no fun. But every day, it's like pick one or two things you can do and make it reasonable. Okay, this I like. Oh, there we go. Oops, rats. This. Okay, <laughs> got to move it to lose it. Two, two great phrases. There's use it or lose it, and also move it to lose it. Years ago, I was hired to do massage at a senior citizen center. We were tracking heart rate and blood pressure. And I saw two extreme examples. There was a woman in her 70s who, if I shut my eyes and I ignored the 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 you know, softer skin of an older woman, 
she felt like she was 20. She moved like liquid in her skin. She was strong. She was mobile. I asked what she did. She said, I swim every day. And I said, oh, do you like swimming? And she said, oh, please. I just know how I want to live. And it made a huge impression on me because she was willing to do something that she didn't particularly enjoy for the quality of life that it gave her. That really stuck with me. The other extreme example was a man his entire body was terrible. Nothing moved. His skin didn't even move. But from his elbows to his fingertips, he was perfect. Great muscle tone, great mobility. He played piano. But that was all he did. Otherwise, his butt never came out of the chair. So those two examples from like 20 some years ago really, really stuck with me. So you got to move it or lose it. but you got to move it, and especially your belly, to lose everything that you don't want in your body. So, okay, and always, you know, try new things. So that's why I bought my, brought my toys. You know, anything counts as exercise. So always be open to trying new things, and you know, keep yourself interested. Okay, compression garments. I hate the sleeve because the sleeve is just directing the fluid up here and then this is the nodal group that's screwed up. So it's not doing the job. The colder it gets, the longer my compression gets. I don't have lymphedema. However, I have veiny legs in my future. So the colder it gets, the longer my compression gets. And yes, I am wearing compression. Okay. This is I like this. This is a bike. This is a compression top. This was scavenger shopping at Gabe's. Okay, you never know where you're going to find stuff. So if your sleeve that insurance paid for is miserable and making you nuts, scavenge. Shop around. You never know. Red, white, and blue. Gabe's. Walmart. You never know where you're going to find useful things. So my, my spanky pants for when it gets a little colder because, again, I'm working all day, I'm on my feet all day, and I don't want my legs looking like road maps. So here, here are my really destroyed compression pantyhose that I wear when I bike in the winter, when or not too cold, ski, okay? I'm on my feet, I want to keep, I don't want my legs looking like my mother's or grandmother's, so this is what I'm doing. And then this thing, let me show you. So I, you know, I would love, God, for them to come up with like even like one sleeve tops. I mean, they would even look so much better than the sleeve because all that fluid that's getting stuck here has to get to here for you to get rid of it. So this thing, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Walmart, whatever. This is a strip of neoprene and Velcro, and I'm wearing one now. Um, keeps my back warm and happy because I'm lifting and moving people all day, and it's putting compression on this limb. Okay, this is quick and easy, $5.99, and this is a quick and easy thing. If you don't want to wear the sleeve, if you are at least wearing your belly compression, you are going to help with that vacuum. So I always have a few around the house because, you know, they're sweaty and nasty. Um, and you can just roll the Velcro and throw it in the wash. But just so you know, uh, it takes a few days to stretch it out a little because when you put them on first, this is a rectangle, but we aren't rectangles. So the bottom will keep rolling up and it's a few days of messing around with it and wearing it like under tight yoga pants to get it to stretch out and conform to you. Because my, I'm wearing it low just because this is where my back decides to not be attached to the rest of me. <laughs> so this is my, like, oh, when I get up in the morning, like, oh, we're not bending today. So, but it's also low. Yeah, I do keep it low because this is where the treasure trove of lymph is all these nodes and I still have this crazy idea I'm gonna fit back in clothes from before kids 
I have one skirt left. <laughs> I got close to it, like, uh, like within two inches of closing it, like four or five years ago, and I'm still hanging on. So, yeah, yeah, it's a hobby. <laughs> okay, but yeah, if you're gonna wear, if you can't deal with whatever other compression, do your belly. And the other thing, you know, I don't know anyone who's got a perfect, healthy, mobile back. So, and possibly more because water. I, I, I sit too long, I got a full back. Oh. Back. Yeah, keeping, yeah, so that, more water, the compression to keep your back muscles warm and happy, a hoop, so you get everything moving again, so let me see what else, so, should, ah, oh, darn, okay, factors that get in the way of other factors that affect lymphatic flow, stress, okay? I knew a woman years ago, she was so upset about things her son was doing that she stopped taking care of her diet, she stopped exercising, couldn't fit into her sleeve, nothing was helping her, okay? She, not taking care of herself was certainly not going to make her son change his behavior. So finding ways of managing stress and uh, go back to exercise, it is the cheapest, easiest way of cultivating the happy hormones to combat stress. Okay, and this, oh God, oh, I can't see it and I'm close, but every, every little factor you can think of, the bills, the house, the kids, you know, the, the cat, the neighbors, you know, everything that gets in the way of your smooth sailing. Okay, another big factor with lymphatic flow is air pressure, barometric pressure. Okay, remember the little drinky bird things? When the air pressure is low, fluid rises. That's why Granny says, oh, I know it's going to rain. I can feel it in my knee. Okay, she's not nuts. It's, it's true. This is how it happens. And so, like, for back when we were all menstruating and you had a premenstrual feeding frenzy and then like a storm was coming up and you think the next day your head's going to explode. That's what's going on, okay? We need the, the air pressure to keep everything feeling normal because when we have all these storm systems, you think, oh my God, my, my arm, my head, my, my legs, my this, again, Compression will help, the belly compression to help draw that fluid. If you can get in a pool, that will help because you want that hydrostatic pressure against your skin to move fluid. So putting everything all together, always wear compression, especially a belly. This, if you're going to wear any one piece, it's the belly. I put this on when I get up in the morning. I don't take it off till dinner time or bedtime, depending on how I'm feeling, how my back's feeling, and what I'm eating and doing during the day. But literally, I keep this on, and I know some people that will sleep in them too. Okay. I know. Yeah, a client of mine who's got pretty severe back problems. She does, and she says this is just a quick and easy fix, rather than taking medication at night, she can just sleep in this and she feels okay in the morning and she's not completely crippled when she gets out of bed. So as long as compression is not cutting in and leaving red marks, you can wear it 24-7. I mean, yeah, if you've got inflammation, extra weight, um, edema, anything you want to get rid of, absolutely your belly. Absolutely. Well, I mean, so many, I don't know anyone who loves wearing their sleeve, okay? I mean, yes, um, yes, the sleeve, okay, okay, you can wear this because it's, ab yeah, yeah. What would be more useful actually is like a compression top, the whole thing because 
because a top is going to come down to your belly also and direct all that fluid because everything you don't want has to get to here. That's why you know, when you lose weight, no one loses it here first. It's like the tide recedes <laughs> from your extremities first, okay? Um, always reach for water before food. Most people absolutely are dehydrated. Fill up on water or go for green veggies or veggie juices, the gazpacho, something, something with water and fiber to fill up first so you're not doing panic eating, okay? And I will tell you, I always keep water and I keep protein bars or apples in my car. Just, I keep it there, just so it's there. If I'm stuck in traffic and I'm losing my mind, I have something that is, you know, healthy, uh, available for me. Um, just in order, so I always fill up with my veggies first. Always just eat the healthy fiber first, then I'll have lean protein and starches last, because the starches, that's the stuff, you know, starches, carbs, or, or the starches and carbs, that's, you know, whatever, your mashed potatoes, rice, everything else, last, absolutely last. If you have, you know, really, di if you have serious dietary issues, then absolutely talk to a dietitian because I am not, these are basic rules for, like, the average person. Um, small portions, that's a big thing. Your stomach should be about the size of your fist. It can expand to 40 times that, but why would you? Okay, so I still keep my kids' plates like from when they were babies so that I just try to stick with that portion size. Um, another issue, or I don't have this on my information down there, there was a great website I found. I actually met the girl. She's got a website called Food Mood Girl. And without her knowing me at all, she, I said, tell me something about what you're doing with talking to people about food. And she said, well, she like described me to a T without even knowing me. She says, well, someone will want a treat, but the whole time they're having their treat, they're giving themselves negative messages. Oh, I shouldn't be eating this. This is so bad for me. I'm already overweight. I need to, you know, this, that, the other. So they're eating all this stuff without paying attention to it. You end up eating way more than you intended to. Then you think, oh, I better undo it and eat something healthy. So you ended up eating way, way, way more than you intended to. And then the morning you start over and go, oh, why did I do that? If you're going to have a treat, Savor every moment of it. Really pay attention to it. If you want grandma's peach pie, have it. Savor every moment and allow yourself that because eating consciously, you will enjoy it and you will be sated. It's so much better than punishing yourself for, you know, oh, I want a treat, oh, I shouldn't have it. Enjoy your, really enjoy your food. Make that decision. Okay, small portions, treats within reason. Exercise every day. Absolutely stick in the anaerobic intervals. You will burn so many more calories. Even if it's something like, oh, I'm doing laundry. You know, so go up the stairs. Put some effort. Don't just slog up. Put some effort into it. When you feel the burn, you know you're there. Okay, so that's where you want to keep going, so that you feel things catch fire. Basic guidelines. Okay, how do you know it's working? Your inches will decrease. Unfortunately, the belly is the last place because everything recedes from the extremities first. What's next? And even losing a few inches, even losing a few centimeters of fluid, you already feel lighter and better. And again, little changes, little changes accrue. Um, what do I have next? Oh, okay. this is an actual patient receiving lymph drainage therapy. <laughs> okay. No, 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 it's just such a great picture. I was looking at all these belly massage photos. So with most of your lymph in your deep abdomen, 
most, a, a lot of any lymphatic session ends up on your belly. So if you are putting all this information together, if you're drinking your water and eating healthy and exercising and wearing compression and the lymph still isn't moving, this would be a case when you probably need hands-on therapy. You probably have clogged nodes and they would be released through hands-on therapy. Another issue is adhesions in scar tissue. Okay, that is a huge factor with blocking lymph. Um, let me see what I have. Oh, benefits of massage. Okay, it's really similar to the exercise. Reduces pain, releases endorphins, supports the work of the heart, reduces blood pressure, increases flexibility. That's a good one. Relieves sore muscles, cramping spasms, moves oxygen into tissues and organs, promotes better sleep. So benefits of massage and the benefits of, of exercise are almost similar, al almost exactly similar. So let me go on to the next thing. So these device, this is a really cool thing. Um, I run into so many people who say my edema isn't changing, I'm doing everything, it's not changing, and I say, well, let's take a look and see what's going on. And it turns out they are so full of adhesions from their scars, so full of adhesions, that's what's blocking the flow of lymph. I have a new client, um, her cancer was like 13 years ago, her edema started 10 years ago, all in her lower arm. A doctor said, we'll do lymph node transplant and that'll take care of it. It didn't. Some people it may work for, it didn't for her, so then she ended up with all these little scars and adhesions around them. Another doctor said, we'll do lipo, liposuction on your arm, that'll take care of it. So she ended up with more scars and more adhesions and it, the edema got much worse. So she's got this big Popeye arm. Working on her, I'm doing a combination of hands-on therapy and then these, these are called dolphin microcurrent devices. They just, whatever, look like little, they look like little tasers actually. But they restore the flow of energy through the body and release the adhesions. I mean, there's all kinds of actually hands-on therapies that <sighs> release adhesions but I will tell you, I've been doing massage a long time. They are temporary and you get millimeters of difference at a, at a time. This releases big areas and it's permanent tissue change. So scars are more mobile. Even really old scars going through multiple tissue layers lay more easily, move more easily, and I've had one one uh, patient already tell me that her edema has reduced by several centimeters in her arm because I've released all those adhesions through her chest. So really amazing new thing. So let me see what else. Anyone ever heard of kinesio tape? If you've watched the Olympics, you've probably seen people with tape on them. This is a really amazing thing. It's a latex-free tape. Um, and on the sticky side, there's like a wave pattern. So depending on how it's applied, you can use it for joint alignment to enhance or inhibit muscle contraction. So if you need help doing something, you can use it for that. Or if you have a muscle that's chronically cramping, you can use it to release things. But really amazing, you can use it for lymphatic drainage. So it's a wonderful, it's like you know, leaving someone's hands on you. And so like, like compression, it's the resistance, it's the movement of the tape against your superficial lymph. So what happens so many times with lymphedema is, okay, one nodal group is, group is out, you need to redirect the fluid somewhere else. This is really cool. Rerouting, sending it to another nodal group. And you can wear the tape for days. Um, 
yeah, it's it's a wonderful tool. I don't know if anyone's heard, seen it used in this application, but it's a really nice extra extra thing to have. So anyhow, let me go. So basic guidelines, always wear belly compression. Water or juicy fruits and veggies before food, lean protein next and starches and other carbs last. Small portions, enjoy your treats and exercise every day with the anaerobic intervals. And that's like the basic formula. Little changes accrue. Any questions that I can answer for you? So, yeah, most of them opening up pathways in the belly because uh, they're superficial and deep pathways. This is where more than half of your lymph nodes are. So, yeah, everything that you want to drain has to get to here. But, yes, and that is at exactly what people look like while they're <laughs> receiving therapy. It is, you know, most massage, I mean, you've seen on movies, it looks like Brunhilde beating the crap out of somebody. This is more like squishing the water through jello without damaging the jello. It's a very, very subtle touch. So a lot of what I do is like working on people pre and post surgery, um, people having joint replacements. Um, they're usually overweight, they're stagnant, they're full of pain meds, they haven't been able to exercise the way they want in a long time. If you flush all that out and you go into surgery with really clean, hydrated, healthy tissues, you do better. Less bruising, less swelling, less pain, you heal faster. And because you create a vacuum, I can work on people as early as 24 hours after surgery and I don't need to touch the surgical area because if it's a knee replacement, it drains up. So I don't need to touch a surgical area to drain it. And people usually just snooze through the whole thing. So anyhow, I think we've reached the end. Can I answer questions for anybody? I blasted through a lot of information. Yes. It could be the seasonings. You know, I love the spices. It, I, I, and I realized that was one of the things like, oh, the blood type diet book. Did you ever hear of that? Eat right for your type. It's not set in stone, but it's pretty darn close. That when you eat foods that agree with your body chemistry, you'll naturally eat less and feel better. And when I first read it, I thought, what a bunch of garbage, you know, because it said, you know, I'm a, I'm a type A blood type, and according to that, a natural vegetarian. I thought, well, that's, that's a crock, because I love steak and chicken and ribs. And I realized over time, I am not sated. I can eat the whole damn thing and still be hungry. And I realized what I was craving was the seasonings, was the spices I use. So I make myself have my salad first, and then I can be sated with a reasonable portion. So, okay, probably the, the fat, the breading. Okay, keep in mind, if it's oh, breaded, the skin. The skin. Okay. No. Yeah, so it might be, you know, if you know your blood type, it might be that it's something that you're not, not digesting. Now, here's another thing with digesting food. So many people have been on antibiotics, and they say, oh, my God, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I get the most horrible gastro problems. You probably need live probiotics, okay? Um, my quick fix is kombucha tea. If, you, if you've ever seen that, it's in the fresh produce section in the supermarket. Last time I had a, an intestinal thing where it got to where I could not eat anything without gas and pain. Got some. Um, it's with the fresh juices and the produce within an hour of sipping it. It was like exactly what I need. It's a slightly fermented tea with live probiotics. So that's like my quick fix now when I get something, if my kids get something, that's, uh, you know, 
kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. I, I don't have it on that list. Um, yeah, um, but you'll see it. It's with the, the fancy fresh juices in, in the supermarket. Giant Eagle even has it. Yeah, but think of that. If you're not, a, if you're not digesting food right, that's letting you know, you know either, either it's your gut, you're missing some good bacteria, um, or it's just something that doesn't work with your body chemistry. Um, Uh, yeah, because I come, I've had over the years people coming in with a laundry list. You know, they've got everything, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, irritable bowel, uh, migraines, you name it, they've got it. They're taking a different med for every symptom, but they still have all these problems. And it all comes down to usually a food allergy or food sensitivity. Um, you know, when people come in with that kind of laundry list, um, it's more often than not, a wheat sensitivity. Because um, I'm seeing more and more of it because of the, the genetically modified grains. We just can't break it down in our bodies. So um, I think I have covered everything and probably at an insane speed from that cup of coffee. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, the really sad thing here is, okay, I've got the $34 billion question. How much money did Americans spend on out-of-pocket alternative health care in 2015? That was, uh, you know, $34 billion. So, you know, it, it's really sad. You know, when I see people who, you know, once the door, my office door shuts and I say, tell me what hurts, I get the laundry list. It's usually like the first thing, like for women who've had like a belly flap reconstruction is, I haven't pooped right in two months. I haven't pooped right since my surgery. Uh, um, and now my car accident from 20 years ago hurts and I can't bend over and I can't. If they go to PT, yes, they're, they're going to get strong. Okay. But the PT prescription can only address the one issue. In the course of a massage, I can say, okay, well, we can, I can get you going to the bathroom and yeah, we can fix that neck thing and yeah, we can, we're going to get everything going. So um, yeah, at some point, massage is now finally licensed in Pennsylvania, but we've got to go the next step further so that it is covered. Um, anything else? Any questions? Yes. Oh, fluffing the girls. Most of my training has been from oncology nurses. And a trend I'm seeing, I'm seeing younger and younger women develop breast cancer. And I swear to God, it is from those stupid underwire bras, which are cutting off the flow of lymph. So this woman, she's got a million different degrees, and she is a massage therapist also. She came up with this idea to fluff the girls to circulate all this fluid. Now, no one, no one has this amputated because of cancer. Your breasts are the only place where you can get cancer in your fat. And once you, you don't have a baby or a man honking on them, they're just stagnant. <laughs> okay? They are stagnant. This is all stagnant. And you know what? When my younger one, when he was done nursing, I said, no one is touching them again. I, I, I'm done. I nursed way too long. It sucked the life out of me. I am done. No one's touching them again. So when I'm listening to this woman talk in class, I'm thinking, oh, God, how many years? It had probably been at least 11 years since there had been any kind of contact with my breasts. And I started fluffing, which is basically one of mushy all of that tissue around when you have your bra off, get everything moving, they swelled up. And I just and then I was draining for days and days afterwards. I can only imagine how stagnant all that fluid was in my breasts that I hadn't I had not literally not touched them or let anybody else touch them for eleven years. So Absolutely. If you're wearing an underwire bra, even if you're not, if you're 
you know, whether you're carrying extra weight or not, um, absolutely, when your bra is off in the evening, mush, all of that tissue around, circulate everything all the way up to your collarbone, up under your armpit, yes. Okay, you still, still, you want it because that skin still has to move. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I will, when, yeah, when I'm, a, or in the shower, yeah, but that's the other thing, because so many women who've had mastectomies, that you have adhesions, so that skin is less rigid. You want that skin to be as mobile as everything else on your body. You don't want it stuck in place. So, yeah, gradually over time, I mean, my little zappers absolutely release adhesions, um, but <sighs> Pennsylvania insurance doesn't cover that. So unfortunately, any of these fun treatments are out of pocket. Okay, hopefully legislation will change soon. But yeah, you want all of your skin mobile and healthy. You want fluid to be able to move through every part of you. So, anything else? Oh, that, okay. Thank you. Yes, I'll take those. So, I think that's, I think we've covered everything. Anybody want to come play with hoops? <laughs> that's good. Let's get hoopy. So let me figure out, how do I turn this silly thing off? Does anyone know?